Hi everyone. Today we are going to solve some word problems on linear Diophantine equations and two variables. Let's look at the first example. At a museum, a general ticket costs 75 cents and a student ticket costs 39 cents. A group went to visit the museum and they spent exactly $99 on the tickets. We have to find what was the number of general members and what was the number of students who went to the museum. So what we do, we assume, we say that let the number of general members be x and the number of student members be y. And we will form the Diophantine equation 75x plus 39y is equal to 9900. You can see that as there were x number of general members and each member spent 75 cents, so the total cost was 75x. Each student member spent 39 cents on the ticket and there were y students, so the total cost on student tickets was 39y and the total is 9900. We have converted our $99 into cents. So, First of all, we will check whether such an equation has a solution or not. So the GCD of 75 and 39, which is 3, we see that 3 divides the right hand side, which is 9900. So the solution exists. Now, Euclidean algorithm is done here. What we do, we divide the bigger number by the smaller number and we use a division algorithm to write it like this. Then we'll divide 39 by 36 in the next step and we get 39 is 36 into 1 plus 3. And in the next step, 36 is divided by 13. We get 36 is 3 into 12 plus 0, no remainder. This is where we stop. And now we do the back substitution. So when we do the back substitution, we start from here. We leave the term where there is a 0. 3 is nothing but 39 minus 36 from this equation. What we do, we will replace our 36 by 75 minus 39. And we see that when we arrange the terms, we get 75 into minus 1 plus 39 into 2 is 3. If we simplify the left hand side, we'll see it is equal to 3. It was nothing but a GCD. Here, we have used the theorem which states that if we are given two integers x and y, we can always write those integers x and y as a linear combination of the GCD. Now, before we proceed, there are two ways. Either we use this equation as it is and start solving or we can divide this whole equation by the GCD3 and put it in a much simpler form. We will be doing that in the later examples. Here I have taken just as it is, these values. So let's come back to this. Here we have 75 into minus 1, 39 into 2 is equal to 3. If you compare this equation with the original equation, our right hand side was 9900. It wasn't 3. So what shall we do? We will try to make a right hand side 9900. For that, we multiply these multiples by 3300. So see, this gives us 3300. 2 into 3300 is 6600 and right hand side becomes 9900. From this, we know that our minus 3300 is the initial solution x0 and this is our initial solution y0. We write the general solution as minus 3300 plus 39 divided by the GCD3 which gives us 13t and y is nothing but 6600 minus GCD75 divided by the GCD3 which gives us minus 25t. So now for different values of t starting from 0 plus minus 1 etc. We get infinite solutions for such a problem. But we were asked 
to find the exact number of general members and students. So we need X and Y both to be positive, which means that this side should be positive and this is to be positive. If we take T is equal to 263, we can get X value as 119. That's the number of general members. And Y is 25, which is the number of student members who attended the museum. Second question. A customer bought 10 pieces of apples and pears for an amount dollars 3.50. We are given that if an apple costs 5 cents more than a pear and more apples than pears were bought. So we have some conditions here. We have to find how many pieces of each kind were bought and what was the cost of each. Now, we'll start by, let's see cents be the cost of each pair. And then the cost of each apple will become C plus 5 because we've given that apple costs 5 cents more than a pair. So we had started with the pair, cost for the each, for each pair, a piece of pair. Now, we'll again assume X to be the number of apples which were bought and Y to be the number of pairs which were bought. Now, if we multiply the cost of each apple by the number of apples and cost of each pair by the number of pairs, we should get $3.50. If we convert it into cents, it is $3.50. They have also given us a customer bought 10 pieces of apples and pears. So the other equation which we get is x plus y is equal to 10. We will next eliminate one of the variables here. We have eliminated y. So we get an equation 5x plus 10c is equal to 350. We have no y here. We have already eliminated that. Either I divide the whole equation by 5 or we will just solve it as it is. Here we have just solved it in the form it is given. So when we solve this for x and c, we can see it has a solution because GCD of 5 and 10 divides the right hand side. We will get x is minus 70 plus 2t and c comes out to be 70 minus t. Now, if we put x value from here into equation 2, we will get y. For different values of t, starting from 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2, we will get infinite solutions. But we have to find how many pieces of each kind were bought and what was the cost. So we have to first see that x and y both have to be positive. So for if this has to be positive, it means 2t has to be greater than 70 for this to be positive. And here, 80 has to be greater than minus, uh, 80 has to be greater than 2t. So, this gives us t value as greater than 35. If I take t to be 38 and 39, we can try by taking different values of t. We get two solutions where the number of apples is more than the pairs, number of pairs. If my number of apples is x and pairs is y, we have x is 6 and y is and cost, when we substitute that t value here, we will get the cost of each apple was 37 cents and cost of each pair was 32 cents. When we take the other value of t as 39, we will get x, y as 8 and 2 and the cost will be 36 and 31. In maths, as you know, we can always check whether our answers are correct or not. If we substitute the C values and X and Y, we can see that this is satisfied. Let's move on to the third question. If I start with the number 0 and I can add or subtract 7 or 17, is it possible to get a number 37? This is the question. And if it is possible, how do we do that? So let's say that 7 and 17 are taken x and y times. This gives me the Diophantine equation 7x plus 17y is 37. As the GCD of 7 and 17 is 1 
and one divides the right hand side solution will exist. Now we use Euclidean algorithm and we see that GCD is one which we have taken here. On doing batch substitution which was explained earlier, we get the linear combination of 7 and 75 as this 7 into 5 plus 17 into minus 2 is equal to 1. We have written 7 and 75, uh, 17 and 7 as a linear combination of the GCD. Now, right hand side here for the original equation is 37. So, we'll multiply these multiples by 37 all over and this gives me the right hand side. If we see here 5 into 37 is 185 and this is minus 74. So, 7 is added 185 times and 17 is subtracted 74 times. The total on doing so will be 37. Fourth question. Find the smallest positive value of n such that 1111x plus 704y is equal to 15,000 plus n. We have to find this n. Now and such that this whole equation has a solution. To solve this Diophantine equation, we have to first check whether the GCD of these two integers divides right hand side or not. So GCD from the Euclidean algorithm comes out to be 11. We can see that. And 11 will divide this term if we know n. So we can see that if we divide 15,000 by 11, there is a deficit. If we add 4, this whole term will be divisible by 11. So n value is 4. Question number 5. John went to buy some stationery for his upcoming examination. If he spent $3 for buying pens worth 12 cents each and one third as many 10 cent pencils. He also bought some rubbers worth 2 cents each. So if he bought at least one of each thing here, what is the smallest number of pencils he bought? So let's start with the number of pens he bought to be x. Now say that he bought one third as many pens and pencils. So the number of pencils he bought will be 1 by 3x. Let the number of rubbers he bought be y. So now the Diophantine equation is this. We have converted $3 into 300 cents. On simplifying, our equation becomes this. Now, solution will exist. We see that GCD of 23 and 3 is 1. 23 is prime, so is 3. And that will divide the right-hand side 450. From Euclidean algorithm and back substitution, we can see that this is the linear combination of 23 and 3. And that is equal to the GCD. But our right-hand side was 450. So when we multiply by 450, the general solution comes out to be this. Now, for different values of t, we get infinite solutions. But here we want some specific solution. So we need positive x and y values. So this side should be positive and this, uh, this value should be positive. If I take t to be 151, we'll get x is 3 and y is 127. The number of pencils he bought was 1 by 3x. As x is 3, so we multiply 1 by 3 into 3 and that gives us 1 as the number of pencils he bought. He only bought one pencil. Come to question number 6. Euler had given this problem. It says solve the Euler's problem of dividing 100 into 2 sum means such that one is divisible by 7 and the other by 11. We have to form the Diophantine equation and solve it. Now, we know that any number which is divisible by 7 has to be a multiple of 7. And likewise, this sum in which is divisible by 11 has to be a multiple of 11. So we assume that the sum ins are 7x and 11y. The total should come out to be 100 because both the summons add up and give us 100. 
we know that solution of such an equation will exist. GCD of 7 L11 is 1. 1 divides the right hand side. The Euclidean algorithm and back substitution gives us 7 into minus 3 plus 11 into 2 is equal to 1. We can see that this is minus 21 if you open the brackets and this is 22 which gives me the GCD which is 1. Now our right hand side was 100. So we will be multiplying by 100 both the multiples and the right hand side. The general solution comes out to be this. And when we take t is equal to 28, we will get x is 8 and y is 4. So what do the summons become? 7 into 8, which is 7 into 8, which is 56, and 11 into 4, which is 44. Add the 2, we will get 100. Question number 7. I exchange my euros and pounds into US dollars after a trip. The cashier gives me dollars 136.68. If he gave dollars 1.26 for each euro and dollars 1.51 for each pound, how much of each currency did I exchange? Now this is the question. And we also have to find what is the maximum number of euros I could have bought. So we from the equation, we will assume euros and pounds I exchanged were x and y. The Diophantine equation which we get is this. We will remove the decimal and we get this. Now, here we know that GCD of 126 and 151 is 1, which we will also see from the Euclidean algorithm and it will divide the right hand side. So, again, from the Euclidean algorithm and back substitution, we get our linear combination as this. Linear combination of 126 and 151 which is equal to the GCD. But the right hand side was 13668. So we multiply by that the whole equation. This gives me the general equation as this. Now they both have to be positive. So for T value minus less than Minus 542, we will get the answer. So, if we take T to be minus 543, as this is less than 542, we will see X is 15 and Y is 78. So, the euros, number of euros I exchanged were 15 and pounds I exchanged were 78. The maximum euros which I can access will be 15 because if I take values smaller than 543, our number of euros and the pounds start becoming negative. So, this is the maximum number. Question number 8. When Mr. John cashed a check at his bank, the teller mistook the number of cents for number of dollars and vice versa. Mr. John spent 45 cents and then he noticed that he had twice the amount with him the twice the amount of the original check. We have to find the smallest value for which the check was written. We will convert everything into cents. So we know that the original amount will be 100x plus y. This is in cents. And because he mistook and gave the number of cents for number of dollars, we have, he has received x plus 100y. This order has changed from the cashier. So, now what he received was x plus 100y. From that he spends 45 cents and then he realizes that he has twice the amount. The original amount was 100x plus y so he has twice of that. If we simplify, we get this as the equation. Using Euclidean algorithm and our Back substitution, the linear combination comes out to be this. We will multiply by minus 45, the whole equation. And this gives us the general equation as x is equal to this plus 98t, y is minus 3015 plus 199t. For different values of t, we get infinite solutions. We need x and y to be positive. 
So we take, if we take t is equal to 16, x will be 83, y is 169. Substitute this in our 100x plus y. That will give me the amount of the original check. Question number 9. A shopper went to buy some items. He bought some soft drinks at the cost of dollars 1.50 each. As there was a deal, if you buy two, you get one free. He also bought some chocolates priced at 50 cents per piece. If he paid dollars 14.50, we have to give the general solution and find how many of each did he buy if he bought at least one of each. Now, this here, what we are given is as there was a deal, if you buy two, you get one free, is just being given. It's an extra information. We are not using that. We just take number of soft drinks and chocolates to be x and y. We'll form the Diophantine equation. We divide all over by 50. We'll get 3x plus y is equal to 29. And I'm not doing Euclidean algorithm. Directly we can see if I take x to be 1 and y to be minus 2, we've written the linear combination. Now multiply by 29. This gives us the general solution as 29 plus t and y is equal to minus 58 minus 3t. As they have to be positive, we see that from both uh, the condition that 29 plus t is positive and minus 58 minus 3 is positive, we get the range for t which is greater than minus 25, less than equal to minus 20. At t is minus 20, we get x is 9 and y is 2. Number of soft drinks is 9 and chocolates is 2. Question number 10. How many ways are there to make dollars 10 from only nickels and quarters? Is it possible to have same number of nickels and quarters? We are given 5 cents make 1 nickel and 25 cents make 1 quarter. Let's write the equation first. So we'll take let the number of nickels and quarters be x and y. The Diophantine equation which we form is because each nickel is 5 cents. So 5 into the number of nickels plus each quarter is 25 cents. So 25 into number of quarters should be equal to 10 dollars which is 1000 cents. Now we divide by 5 all over, reduce it and we get this as the Diophantine equation. Again we have directly taken the linear combination. I have taken x to be minus 4, y to be 1. We get the linear combination. Multiply by 200 all over, we get the general solution. As x and y have to be positive, that's the condition. If we take t to be 161, x will be 5, y will be 39. So one part of the question is solved. And they say, is it possible to have same number of nickels and quarters? Which means, can x and y be equal? So if I equate x is equal to minus 800 plus 5t, to 200 minus t, we see that t value is integer. So as it is, it is not an integer. As it is not an integer, we cannot have same number of nickels and quarters with our this equation. So number of nickels is 5 and quarters is 39. If a person has $20 and he wants to buy 12 cent and 16 cent stamps, is it possible if so, how many of each can he buy if he buys at least one of each? So now 12 cents and 16 cents he wants to buy. We'll say let him buy x and y number of these cents, uh, these stamps. So the equation becomes 12x plus 16y is 2000 because he has $20. We reduce this equation and we see solution exists as the GCD divides the right hand side. We'll again write the linear combination, multiply by 500, get the general solution. X and Y both have to be positive. Now this gives us a range for T, 125 and 166. If I take all these values one by one from this range, we'll get the X and Y values as these. Last question. What is the perpendicular distance to the origin 0, 0 from the Diophantine equation Ax minus By is equal to 1? We know a formula from our 
uh, coordinate geometry that the perpendicular distance from 0, 0 to the line is this where we will be substituting the point 0, 0 for x and y. So if we do that, we'll get d is minus 1 by root of a square plus b square. If we take the magnitude because distance cannot be negative, we get d is 1 upon root of a square plus b square. I hope the problems helped in your understanding of the topic. Thank you for watching.